Ow. Hello, and welcome to May and Lewis's 2024 Formula One season predictions. <laughs> Let's get into it. <laughs> That's definitely the the Matt P1 Tommy Richard Hammond vibe edition. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but yes, welcome to the predictions, ladies and gentlemen. May. My first question, yes. actually, is do you think it's going to be a good season? I think if we exclude the title battle, it will be a good season. I think it's going to be very close between a fair few teams. I think there's okay. going to be a few dramas, but I just know the title battle, Don't spoil it. as Fernando Alonso has already said, is not going to happen. Well, I'm in agreement that there is not going to be a title battle, but I'm not giving away who I think is going to win the championship yet, even though to mm -hmm. most of you who have any interest oh, in F1, yeah, it's probably quite obvious. Any... Yeah. Oh, dear. Right, so, <laughs> May, who have you picked to have the most retirements for this season? And I have your reason picked... why? It's going. To, it's probably not going to be much of a shock, but Esteban Ocon. Okay. I just think that Alpine is utter shite. I just don't think it's going to be good reliability-wise. I just don't think there's going to be anything to it, and I think Ocon's just going to keep trying to overdrive it to prove a point, to save, try and one-up Gasly, and he's just going to bin it. You've definitely well been watching Drive to Survive. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I see your logic there, because they seem to have gone backwards year on year for the past yeah. few years now, to be honest. And speaking of that, the driver that I picked is one that I hate to say, and it's Kevin Magnussen. Ooh. Mainly because I think the Haas is, they obviously, Komatsu or whatever he's called, has already said they're going to be yeah. last. So I, I think the same sort of scenario, Magnussen is going to try too hard and the car is going to be too unstable and it's yeah. just, he's just going to crash. And I don't think the Ferrari power unit is going to be particularly reliable this year. No. Although they did complete the most laps in testing. And they have a single issue. Hey, but see, testing. that to me is a bad omen. You do more laps in testing, the worse you do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I've got Magnussen for that, yeah. You've got Ocon. Which I understand. Yes. So, moving on from there, I will go to, do you think anyone will lose their race suit during the season? Not the end, during the season. I do not think anyone will do that. Good. I think because the only, the only people I can think of, well, there's two. There's Sargent and there's Perez, but why would they, when their contract runs out at the end of the season anyway, they'd probably just keep them because it'd probably cost more to break their contract and get someone in mid-season than it would whatever damage they're doing. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, I also don't think anyone is going to lose the race seat, mainly because I think that Checo isn't going to do as badly as he did last season. But no, that's That's I agree. another question. But, but then again, you say people say he did badly. He still got wins, and he still got P2 in the championship. Yeah, that's that's my point. If, like, if yeah, he, he had a good car, but if he's still holding on to P2 in the championship, they they can't drop him realistically. Yeah. And with yeah, as exactly. quick as I think he's the RB is going to be. Yeah. So I can't see it. But if anyone was to lose the race seat, my prediction would be Sergeant. Yeah. But, again, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, no. What do you think is going to be the worst race this season? Miami. It's overhyped. It's shit track. It's just shit in general. There's nothing to like about it. And, yeah, it's just cringeworthy. Jeez, nothing mate. happens in it either. May's going straight for the throat there. Yep. Well... I'm sure it's no surprise to anybody, but I've picked Monaco. 
Although we did have a banger yeah. there last season, it's usually a very dreary race. Yeah, I think weather. If it's a sunny weekend, Monaco will be dreary. If it's raining or something like that, it be, it's usually it's quite good, and it always sort of has been. It can be, yeah. Moving on from there, what about the best race? I'll go first on this one. And hear me out, because for the last few seasons, it has been an absolute snooze fest. But I've gone with Spa. Yes. Ooh. My reason being is, I think it's going to be very, very tight between a few teams on the grid. And I can just imagine Spa, mm. it's going to be one of them races where it's, it's rain, it's dry... It's going to be chaos, yeah. and there's going to be a mixed-up order, is what I'm thinking. Yeah. I don't, you know, it might not be, but that's my thoughts. See, I, I'm, I was very tempted because it's extremely biased because I'm going to it. It's Silverstone, but <laughs> I, I'm still going to stick because it's always done every single year, year in and year and out. There's never been a bad race there, Brazil. Well... When has there ever been a bad? race weekend at Brazil. There just hasn't. There's not been a bad race weekend, but has it been the most entertaining Grand Prix for the last few years? Uh, last well, year, I maybe. So. Uh, yeah, last year, 2022... No, was 20, it, 2022 is no, it? definitely not. That's where it matches. 2021, yes, because that's when Hamilton... Hamil Hamil that twenty twenty one was the one where Hamilton just absolutely came through the field. Yeah, yeah. And then they had the incident with Max. Twenty nineteen was a great one because that's when Ferrari imploded as usual. Um, twenty eighteen Verstappen and Ocon had the incident, and then there was all that fiasco. And that was a good race. Yeah, yeah, I'll back it. I'll back it. I'm still going with Spa though. <laughs> yeah. Um, Spy's a great track, to be fair, so... Right. One crazy thing that you think will happen during the season? I think... I know this is a long shot. Alpine are going to put the team up for sale. I think they're going to implode so hard that the management are actually going to just give up and either... Well, they're either going to rebrand again... Oh, they're going to put the team up for sale. Okay. I just can't see them continuing. With how, again, yes, I have seen Drive to Survive, but how much they were imploding last year, and you could just see it anyway. And they With got rid of Otmar, of course. Drive like Piastri. Otmar just getting rid of all of a sudden. Everything just seems to be going tits up there. They don't seem to be any sort of path. It just seems to be French. Okay, okay. Mine is a bit safer than that, I'd say. And depending on who you ask, it might not be the craziest thing in the world. But to me, yeah. I've gone with Lando Norris gets his first race win. I mean, being a Lando Norris fan, I really hope that. But again, I don't want to get my hopes up because being a Lando Norris fan, expecting him to win is like being a Ferrari fan, expecting him to be a world champion. That is true. Or, or being a clerk fan. <coughs> Tommy. Yeah. No, Matt. Matt, sorry. Not Tommy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, most disappointing team. I think I think you've already got your, your sights set on this. I'm not... Well, no, I'm not going to be disappointed with them because I expect them to solve. Alpine isn't actually that. I'm going with Aston Martin. I just don't see it. Sure, they said it's an improvement, but I just don't feel like... I don't feel they're going to do terrible, but compared to what people and the team think they're going to do, I just don't think they're going to do it. And also, they've got Lance Stroll, and if you've got Lance Stroll in your team, you're clearly not um, that invested in what you're doing. <laughs> um, you're clearly not serious. Because, why would you be thinking about becoming world championship when you've got that person still on your team um, I, I think so, he mainly yeah, wants just, his son to win it. the championship doesn't he yeah which, which is I'm, never going to happen so yeah I'm sorry it, Lance it, it could just be isn't good driving enough. Max Verstappen's car 
He could be driving Max Max Verstappen's car against fucking Buddy Mazepin, and Hamilton will end up winning the championship. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I well, I actually went for Alpine. Was, oh. Like like you said, you got low expectations for him, but yeah. I've I've gone with Alpine because they shouldn't be going backwards, but I think they are going to. I agree. Yeah. And I'm sure my uh, predictions will uh, show you that. What about the driver? Who's, who's your most disappointing driver? And I'll start first, actually, because um, I also went with Esteban Ocon. <laughs> oh. I know, yeah, you were saying earlier about Ocon having a bad season. Yeah. And, yeah, I've gone most dis disappointing is Esteban Ocon, because, like you said, I think he's just going to try too hard and overdrive the car and yeah. just keep losing it. And I think he's going to get royally slapped up get, by Gasly. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. But, um, for me, again, it would be Lance Stroll, but that's just expected because he's just the same Lance Stroll. There's nothing, nothing good about him. Never has been. Um, so mine may be controversial. Oh. He's George Russell. Oh, okay, okay. I just don't think he's going... He's just... He seems too full of himself. He doesn't seem... And then he just seems to bottle it. And then he just seems too full of himself again when he gets a decent result. And then he bottles it again. And then he keeps getting slapped up by Hamilton. Because he he think he gets too full of himself after he beat him in qualifiers and then bottles it in the race. I just don't really think that's going to continue. I agree. That's, that's a good point. Yeah, he has been a little bit uh, inconsistent as of late. And mm. if if the car is more suited to their driving styles, then I I think Hamilton's gonna make that gap even further out actually. Yeah. So that, Don't that's... forget he, that gap would have been bigger than it seemed to be because he got disqualified at Cota last year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he still slapped him up. He did definitely. What about your most surprising team? Surprising, I'm going to actually go with Williams. Okay. People seem, even though people know they think they're improving, I think they are going to be a solid midfield team. With Alex Albon, anyway. Um, I was going to say, you need to put that caveat that in. <laughs> one driver. Um, yeah. But with Alex Albon, that team is going to slap. With Logan Sargent, on the other hand, he may get double his points tally of last year, so I, th I think he'll get two points. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I, I actually went with Visa Cash Out RB. Mm. Because as much as people are saying it's the 2023 Red Bull, it's not. It's not. Yeah, it's not. But even if it is, then I still think if if you put a 2023 Red Bull in that team so far, just just based off testing, bear in mind, I think that's still yeah. clear of quite a few teams. You know, you, you got the likes of Alpine, Williams, uh, Haas. It's going to be clear of all them in a 2023 Red Bull. Yeah. So if, if they've got that basic design and then improved on it, then I think they're going to be even better, so that's why I've gone with RB. Yeah. That's what, that's well, what I'm going to call look them, at by how the way. Well, they started doing towards the end of the season. Yeah, that's fine. But to look how well they, when they got the upgrade at the end of the season last year, well, they started doing. They were probably sick to ask this team, maybe at a similar I, level with Alpine, I'd say. Yeah, I was going to say, towards the end, I think they were a little bit quicker and if than just Alpine. Just improving on that. Just a little yeah. bit inconsistent. So, and if they're improving on that, I think, yeah. Then. There's definitely a bit of potential there. Yeah. Uh, now, obviously, for the driver, like I said, you don't have to choose it from the same team. And I've actually gone with, and hear me out, Sergio Perez. I don't think he's going to be challenging mm -hmm. Max for the title or anything like that. Yeah. But I think if he can... But it's not going to be as bad as people think. Yeah, I think if he just improves his yeah. consistency, he doesn't get knocked out in Q1 and Q2 like he did last season, then I would deem that as a good yeah. improvement for him. 
because Red Bull needs him to be second, and that's all they need of yeah. him. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I went with Perez for that. See, for me, I'm going to go with... Piastri. I can Carlos see it. Sainz. Oh! No. Okay. This season, he's got something to prove. I think he's going to beat Charles Leclerc. Okay. And I just think he's going to exceed a lot of people's expectation. Even though people... Because people now think, well, the Ferrari's going to be more tailored towards Charles. But I think Carlos is just going to bring something different. Um, well, yeah, yeah. Just to try like... and prove a point as to why they shouldn't sack him. It's like last year. Because, again, he shouldn't have been dropped. It's like last year. Carlos did all the major things. He got Paul at Monza. Yeah. He got the win in Singapore. And yet people still rate Leclerc the bottle job over him. Yeah, exactly. Which, uh, I he mean... He was consistent. Pure pace. I know Charles... Yeah, pure pace. Charles has it on pure pace. Yeah, but... Charles has it. But I think Sainz is the more complete driver right now. Yeah. Especially at Ferrari, like, when when he was leading the Singapore Grand Prix and they were like, oh, you, well, you're getting within a second of Lando. He's like, yeah, that's the point. That's what I'm doing it for. Yeah. Charles doesn't have that mentality. No, he doesn't. Charles listens to what the team does, whereas uh, yeah. science sort of dictates what, what and he they doesn't, need to do. He doesn't think about other drivers sort of thing. Like, like Carlos was thinking about keeping Lando in his DRS because then Lando would be able to defend off the Mercs. Charles would just try and get away. Mercs would overtake Lando and then just overtake him. Yeah, yeah. Fair, fair, fair point, fair point. And I think if he doesn't get either the Audi seat, because obviously they're coming in 2026, or yeah. if he doesn't get the Mercedes seat, I'll be very surprised. The Mercedes, obviously, is if they don't get yeah, Antonelli. I, I don't think Antonelli's going to Mercedes, but even if he did, I think... When Sergeant gets dropped at the end of the season, he'll be replaced by Antonelli. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. It's, it's possible. For the top team. It's possible. Yeah. But mm. that's what I mean. Mercedes need stability. They've just lost their best driver. Yeah. They need a, a good, yeah. consistent driver who can deliver while they build up Antonelli. Yeah. That's what I think. So... And Let's then again, move on. maybe when Ant- I think if it is, then when Antonelli is built up, he'll end up replacing George Russell because George Russell keeps failing. There you go. Fair play. And a Norris <laughs> Antonelli pairing is that is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, a signed Antonelli pairing. No, I'd, I'd I'd say if if they were going to replace Russell, Mercedes would try and get Norris in the team. But it depends on well McLaren is doing. Yeah, think. yeah, yeah. True. Right, let's go with constructors now. I'll start. And it pains me yeah. to say this, but in last place, I've gone with Haas. I've done the same. Okay, so we can both make points here. I've, I've done it because, obviously, Komatsu's already said they're, they're aiming to finish races, basically. That's it. They're going to be the slowest yeah. on the grid. Exactly. And Haas yeah. aren't exactly known for bringing big updates mid-season. And usually if they do, then they end up being worse than what they are actually originally on. Yeah, they need, seem to kill the tyres more and slow them down. <laughs> so I'm, I'm pretty sure we can move on with that one then. The Haas is pretty yeah. much guaranteed last, I think. It, I I honestly I will be surprised if they score more than two or three points. Same. Okay, so we're on the same wavelength there. Who have you yeah. gone for P9? Um, kick Sauber steak as the team. <laughs> I agree. I've also <laughs> gone with Sauber. Hopefully, all our predictions are the same. Don't really see much in them. I just think, again, it's like last year. They did a glory one in pre-season testing to try and look good. Then they're just there. There's not really much to them. But I still yeah. get. I think we'll get more points, but I just don't really see much in them. Yeah. I just think now they're just waiting to be took over by Audi so they get investment and can actually start doing something. 
That, that's what I think as well. I, I think Bottas will do what he seems to have been doing for a while now, which is like turning up at two or three races and actually doing really well yeah. and then going back to just chilling out. It, it seems yeah. a little bit like Raikkonen now for me. It yeah, is end I agree. of Ferrari days. He's just there to make up I get, the points. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I just think, again with Joe, I think he still has potential. But again, it, every time he seems to be doing well, he seems to have a lot of bad luck down to strategy, maybe personal mistakes yeah. or team issues but like at or engine issues. But something always seems to go wrong when he sort of finally has a bit of a chance to do something good. Yeah. Well, I, I actually, I rate Joe higher than a few other drivers on the grid, but I don't think I he's, he's not one of them drivers where he can outperform the car, if you know what I mean. Yeah. If he if he gets in a top top five car, then I think he finishes in the points every race. Yeah. You know what I mean? But with him being in a backmarker car, I don't think he can outdrive the car. No. And when their opportunities come, somehow it gets bottled. Yeah, like his clutch at the uh, Hungary Grand Prix. Yeah. Started where P5, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was. And, and then he just went back, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. And the same at um, Zandvo, where at one point he's running in P3 and then they bottled on the strategy. Yeah. So, my P7... Actually links in with my. Oh, sorry, yeah, my P8 links in <laughs> with my disappointing driver slash team, and it's Alpine. Um, I think it's a little bit brave. Alpine. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say I think it's a little bit brave because you know I didn't I didn't think you'd think they'd go that far back to be behind Williams and Alfatori yeah. or. Visa cash out by B, whatever. I th- my honest opinion is I think at the start of the season they are going to be the slowest team on the grid. I just think because they do have facilities and they've got money, they will do sort of like what McLaren did where they brought an improvement, but theirs will only be sort of minor to maybe help them get a few points. Okay. okay. That's it. I, I'm, I'm in the same boat as you there, I guess. Uh, I, I think... Based on the livery, bear in mind, because there's no paint on that car. Yeah, what livery? So they must be losing a, de- a decent amount. Just, like, for them to feel already they can't have any paint on the car, they must know that they are behind. You yeah. know what I mean? Exactly. So, right, I've got, I've got a feeling we're going to be similar here. P7... I've gone with Williams. I have gone with Williams. <laughs> <laughs> and I, can, I can already see what your P6 is going to be now. I have a feeling it's also going to be the same. Yeah, I swear to God, we, we, have, we have not corab- collaborated to make these predictions. No. Uh, yeah, Williams for me gonna have a good solid season in the midfield, like you said. I think they're gonna to be towards the front of the midfield, but the midfield nevertheless is still gonna be fine for like two or three points a race, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I I, I feel I, that it's 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 going to be like um the situation that Aston Martin had with Alonso and Stroll last year where Albon's yeah. going to score all the med basically all the points and if because of Sargent, that team's in a worse position than it should be. Like agreed, agreed. If there were two Albons, two Albons in that team, I would put them ahead of my next prediction. But unfortunately, there's not. Yes, yeah, same. And so my next prediction exactly. is Visa Cash App RB. <laughs> Mine is Visa Cash App RB. Yeah. I don't think we really need to explain that one then, do we? Same, same no. sort of thing. They're going to be at the front of the midfield. I per well, I'm not going to say that actually because we can get that in the next bit. But yeah, yes. it, they're they're going to be P6 for me. Now here yeah. is where it could change, right? Because I, this. Go on. Let's go first for this one. Well, I was going to say this My is P5, where I think. Oh. Hang on, hang on, hang on. 
This is where I think yeah. the battle is going to be from P5 to P2 in the constructors. Yes. Okay, okay. So my P5 prediction is Aston Martin. Oh, no. <laughs> Again, what? it's going for this case. I don't think they're going to do as well as what people think they're going to do. But I think they're going to be solid. Well, you're going to have Alonso that's there a fair bit, getting all the points. And you've just got Stroll crashing, doing whatever Stroll does. Um, so that's why they get P5. Fair play, fair play. And once again, we are in agreement there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Exactly like you said, Alonso is going to be scoring... 95% of the points and Stroll is, is, is going to turn yeah. up at the odd race like he did last year get get a couple of P5s couple of P6s stuff like that yeah so next I've gone probably controversially based on what I've seen a lot of a lot of other people put I have gone with Mercedes oh no <laughs> We've done the same thing, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> oh dear, this isn't good, mate. <laughs> no. Yeah, once again then, Hamilton. Uh, the, in, in my opinion, Hamilton is going to score the majority of the points. Yeah. Uh, Russell's going to have a little bit of a disappointing season. Yeah. <laughs> Very similar story to uh, Williams. And uh, Aston Martin, but not quite as bad, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and I just, I just don't think the car's going to be as usual. It's just going to be not great. Yeah. So next, Mr. May, I'm guessing we've both <laughs> gone for McLaren. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And the annoying thing is I really wanted to put McLaren ahead of Ferrari because my mate here on going still with someone is a big McLaren uh, Ferrari fan, obviously I'm a big McLaren fan. But I just think because especially now with both you can you've got Piastri still sort of learning. Yeah. Lando is obviously there when the car is good. But again I, I think it's going to be the case when they start off a tiny bit on the back foot. No nowhere near like last year. I I just don't but I don't think they're gonna be as strong as some of the teams and then during the season they get better but they're against a Ferrari which seems like a solid car in pre-season testing and they've got two drivers one who's like trying to make sure that they're going to lead the team when Hamilton joins and one who's got a point to prove and I just think that pairing now with Fred Rousseau and control it seems like Ferrari's actually ironing out the Ferrari issues that they have and I just think they will have the edge that's the exact same as me. I, 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 the only thing I might add is I believe at the start of the season where Lando and Oscar are concerned, it's going to be fighting for like P5 to P8-ish. And Ferrari, I think, yeah, are going to be agree. fighting for the podium spots. Yeah. So that, that's the only difference. I think towards the tail end of the season, the, the midway through, the McLaren will actually be the better car. But I think they won't be able to overcome the deficit that Ferrari have already put down. No. And therefore, obviously, the de facto champions then, it's Red Bull. Yes. Because Nui has absolutely cooked. Yes. And if, if He's looked at the Mercedes and gone, I can use that. I, I can and fix it. I can use it and it works, yeah. Well, he's, it just proves Adrian knew he's fucking genius that, doesn't it? And, again, yeah. I think Checo, he's he's my most improved driver. I can imagine him being in, in the fight for the for the podium positions consistently this year. And, obviously, we know Max, the guy just doesn't have a day off. Yeah. So, that leads us on to the driver's standings then, Mr. May. So, who have you put as last? I have gone for Kevin Mackinson. No! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I don't want to say this. I don't want to say this. 
because he's one of my favourite drivers, as you know. But yes, I have also <laughs> gone for K-Mac. <laughs> oh no. I just hope these aren't all the same. Because for my... We, we don't need to explain why. We've already said the Haas is going to be the worst car. I, yeah. I, put, I put it to you, Mr. May, that Kevin Magnussen will not score a point this season. I agree. Okay. Uh, my P19, I have gone with Logan Sargent. I've gone with Logan Sargent. Oh, no! <laughs> uh, oh, no. Oh, I, I really hope every single one isn't the same here. <laughs> yeah, Sargent, once again, uh, the, the car is going to be good enough for fight for the points, but uh, Sargent isn't. Uh... I think he's yes. going to be very close with my next driver, and I think it's going to be based on the average finishing finishing position rather than the points scored. If you know what I mean? Yes, I agree. Should we fuck it? <laughs> <laughs> right, mate. I'll let you go next. My P eighteen is um, Nico Hulkenberg. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> my P eighteen is also Nico Hulkenberg. <laughs> I get that. I just think the only time he is going to score points is during the sprint because because mm-hmm. usually he yeah. does well in qualifying and the, the sprint is... isn't long enough for the Haas to really show its weakness. Yeah. Um, but again, it's it's the Haas, so that's the only time he's sort of got a chance to score points. So, but I think he's going to get a couple more or one more than Logan. Yeah. Well, I imagine two or three points for for the pair of them. <laughs> But like I said, yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be down to who's had the higher finish, if you know what I mean. Which I think would be Nico Hulkenberg. I think he's gonna yeah. get a solid P9 at some point. Yeah. Right, May. I'm gonna let you go next because I'm hoping it's not the same driver again. Oh, you're now P17. P17. My P17 driver. Yeah. Is. Show Guan Yu. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't good. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's either we are clearly masters at this, or we both have absolutely no idea. Because yeah. I have also gone with Show Guan Yu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, because the car again. I'm in P16, I've gone for his teammate, Valtteri Bottas. I've also done that. Because <laughs> mainly the car. And then P- but I just think that boss has to wedge him. And then P15, I've gone for Esteban Ocon. Well, for fuck's sake. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. Who's the P14, mate? Now, this is where it couldn't get interesting. Because my P14 is... Yuki Sonoda. Oh. Okay, explain. I just think now he's against Ricardo, the pressure's going to get to him and he's going to fail. He's going to be like the case where he was against Gasly and he just didn't do that well against Gasly. I, I don't really think the I think the car is going to be good enough to get points on occasions, um, but it's where it requires a bit of luck, a bit like. Yeah, look, I just don't see him. He isn't the luckiest that well. of drivers. Got, to be he, fair. No, and he got slapped up by Liam Lawson. Um, yeah, he did. So, but I what, one thing I will say is his, his penalty at Spain last year was a, a, a big, big mistake from the FIA, if you ask me, because he did not force yeah. uh, Jean off the track at, at Spain. Yeah, I agree. So we we at least have two drivers in different positions now, so that's good. Yeah. Because my P, uh, P15, isn't it? Or is it P14? Um, I can't remember. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, yeah it's P, P... No, it's P13. 
My P13. No. I think P14. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, that's P13 well, just that Bottas you just decided. Just think Bottas was the last one that we just did. No, Ocon was. Oh, shoot, yeah. Well, yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, my <laughs> P13, yeah? Yeah. I have gone with Pierre Gasly. Ooh. Now, I, I think obviously he's going to do better than Ocon. But I think yeah. not only is uh, the car going to be absolute garbage, but Ocon himself is going to be garbage. And I think Pierre Gasly yeah. outscored him last year, if I'm correct. And he's just, for me, yes. the more consistent driver. So I, I, I've put... I I put Gadsley ahead of Ocon, but it's going to be probably like five or six points between them in my mind. Yeah, I agree on that front because I put Pierre Gadsley P12. Oh, okay. My my P12. Just, Go on, sorry. Close between them. Yeah, this is going to be close. Definitely. I think it's going to be like close between them, but yeah. Well, my P12. I have gone with Alex Albon. Ooh. Now, it's like we said, they are going to be scoring the majority of the points. And obviously, I put uh, Alpine behind Williams in the Constructors' points. Yeah. Just because I think Albon is, is, is going to do exactly what he did last year. He's going he's gonna to be consistently fighting for the points. And when he gets a good qualifying position, he's just going to be defending the full race like last year as well. Yeah. So I I see him getting a good good few like P8s, P7s. I yeah. I don't imagine any higher than that, but I can imagine him being up there, especially with the James Vowles hype, hype train. Yeah. Yes. See my see even though we've got sort of different, they're not major because my P11 is Alex Albon. Okay, okay. For that pretty much similar reason, he's going to deliver and everything, but again, I think the Williams is going to be good, especially in his hands, but again, I, I, when there's five teams that are quite clear ahead of him, yeah, I just can't see him really doing much against them. Okay. Well, I think it's going to be quite close between Gadsley, um, Albon and my next driver who is Daniel Ricciardo. Wow. Because I'm not feeling it. I am not feeling the Daniel Ricciardo hype train. He's he's come back into F1. They they said in the fucking drive to survive. Oh, he's he's, he's had to put him on the front row of the grid, and I don't I don't believe that. <laughs> like I believe he. He's, he's, he's back to his ways of old. He'll still be a very, very good driver. Yeah. yeah. But I don't... I I think it's past him now, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think we're going to see the old crazy dive bombs from absolutely miles back. No, I agree. Or if he does it, he'll fail it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. I, I, I think he's, he's going to be flashes, like obviously last year at Mexico. There's going to be flashes with like fucking El Daniel's back. Yeah. And then I think the next couple of races, he's just going to have absolute shitters. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm with Ricardo. That's P11, that, isn't it, Ricardo? Yeah. Yeah. So who have you put as your P10? Again, it's close. So I put Daniel Ricardo, And I do think it's going to be very close between the two Alpines, Albon, Ricardo, and Sonoda. Okay. I just think there's only not there's not gonna be that much differentiating them, but I just think Ricardo will have probably that one <coughs> sorry. That one thing like in Mexico where Yeah. He brings his a hollow points and I just think that's what's gonna do it for him. That's exactly what that's I think. It. I just over a season I think he's gonna perform worse than other people, but I just think there's gonna be that one race where he does say amazing and he gets all the points and then that's what solidifies his P10. Okay, okay. See, I, I sort of went the other way. I, I think, obviously, the 
RB is going to be the quickest of them three cards at the start of the season, but I don't think it's going to last for long. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that's why I put Ricardo down a spot. And my P10, and I thought about this long and hard because I, I, I don't rate the driver, but I think the team is going to do all right. I went with Lance Stroll for P10. <laughs> So, the reason I'm saying that is obviously I've put Aston Martin as uh, ahead of RB in the constructors. But I think towards the tail end of the season, like at, at the start, I think the RBs could possibly be fighting with Stroll in particular. Yeah. But obviously Aston Martin will out, out, out develop the RB and start pulling clear at the end. <laughs> but I've put Stroll as my yeah. P10. And that is why it destroys my P9. For pretty much that same reason. <laughs> See, we're, we've got the, all the same drivers in similar spots, to be fair. Well, it, it, we've literally had the same order, apart from one. Yeah. And it, since that one, my whole order's been the same, so bumped up one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my, my next driver is the <laughs> one that you put quite lowly. I've gone P9, yeah. Yuki Sonoda. Wow. Well. Because I think he has been, he's, he's not hes not one of them, he's not a rapid improver, but he's been growing slowly, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, he, he did get a little bit slapped up by Lawson, but I think that was more his look of the draw in them in them times, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I think all, over a season, if, if it was uh, Sonoda and Lawson, I think Lawson probably would have him. Yeah. But I don't think Ricardo is consistent enough. Because we, we saw at the start of last year, there was a lot of P11s and P12s for Yuki. And I, th I, th I think in a better car, yeah, he's, he's going to be fighting for the P6s. And, and the, well, I'd say P6 to like P10. You know what I mean? For the first four or yeah. five races, definitely. I do get that, yeah. Right, I'll go next as well, because this one is very controversial, I think. My P8, I have gone with George Russell. And we're back to it, because I've also oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the, I, I've, I've obviously put Mercedes as P4 in the standings. Yeah. He's, he's going to deliver on the odd race, like a few drivers... But it's just, again, it's going to be the lack of consistency for me that puts him behind some of the other drivers. Yeah. And then I'm sensing, actually, this next one's going to be a mix-up between us because I've been brave. So I'll let you go next. P7, I have gone for. Pastry. Oh, okay, yeah, we are different, that's good. I think he's going to improve, like the car has, but I think it is it's just going to be a close call, so, like, so close between these like that. I think his inexperience is where it may sort of let him down, but yep. again, I think it's going to be close between the next lot. So. Yeah, yeah, mine's the exact same logic. I think from now, my P3 to my uh, P, this is P7, isn't it? Is, is yeah. going to be like it was last year, where yeah. you're at the end of the Grand Prix and there's like seven points between all of them. You know what I exactly, mean? Exactly, yeah. I've, I've gone with the exact same reason, but I've actually gone with Fernando Alonso. Ooh. Because obviously I, I, I'm well aware Alonso will clearly outdrive that car, but I think there's only a certain amount that he can do. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get that, yeah. Toward, towards the end of the season, I think McLaren will outdevelop them. And uh, they'll, they'll be clearly in front of them towards the end, is is is, yeah. is is my thoughts, along with the Mercedes. Yeah. And that's why my P6 is Mr. Pastry. <laughs> and mine is Mr. Alonso. <laughs> 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 because, again, it's the same reason I think... 
the McLaren is going to be faster, but I just think Alonso is going to be basically just from that experience and the, the fact that he's still so good. He is good. Especially during the race. He's, he's going to just get them few extra results that you may not end up having a, as consistent as a season because of, no, yeah. I just don't think the Aston will have it but I just think when them points are there he's going to get them yeah I am in, I'm in complete agreement just ahead I'm in complete agreement with that but obviously I put him behind Mr. Pearson yeah. because just just I think that the Aston is, is, is going to be at the very back of that front, front five if you know what I mean Towards the end, yeah, I think they'll be fighting to get through to Q, get get through to Q three with a couple of the other cars. Yeah, I agree. And next, I've gone with someone who I think, in equal machinery, right now, right now, would get slapped up by Alonso. Yeah. And I've gone with Lewis Hamilton. I've also got with Lewis Hamilton. Oh, right. <laughs> I wasn't expecting um, that. I just think, um, I just think, basically, the, his limit's going to be the car. Yeah. And he's going to it's going to get to a point where he just decides he's just giving up at that point in that team and he's just ready for Ferrari, so. Yeah, that's that's my thoughts, exactly. I, I, I think it's clear, yeah. it's clear he has already lost faith in the team to build him a championship car. Yeah. And I think, his 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 drive this season, as in like his hunger, is going to be so low. Yeah. But as I've said, Russell's going to be very inconsistent this season, and I can see Hamilton just yeah. cleaning up the points that Russell is costing. If you know what I mean. Yeah. So I've gone with Hamilton P five. Who have you put with? Uh, no P six. Sorry. Who have you put with P five? P five. It may sound a bit controversial, but I've actually going with Chuck Leclerc. Ooh, okay. I think between these three drivers, it's going to be extremely close. Well, I think we've got the same yeah, three drivers. Think, well, yeah, it's, it, it's definitely the same three drivers, but I just think he's against a teammate who has got something real to prove. And this is Lando and McLaren, and when they work well together, they are well. Apart from Max Verstappen, they're unstoppable. So yeah, to me, there is a lot more respect between Science and Norris than there is Science and Leclerc. Yeah. Maybe uh, no, maybe maybe respect is is the wrong word, but there's a lot more like um, friendship, more friendship between them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So well, you. Signs helping Lando get a P2 while he's secured first. You should see that with his teammate. <laughs> yeah, if, if if that was Leclerc, Science would have been trying to fuck off. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, because Leclerc would probably be trying to attack him for the win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously, Ferrari favour Leclerc. And, yeah. and actually, for that exact reason, I have gone with Carlos Science P5 because I Ooh. feel if there is... Uh, an opportunity to to do so. Ferrari will prioritise the clerk. Yeah. And that's that is my only reason why I put the clerk yeah. ahead of science. Because yeah, I get that. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, you know, you know, science is leaving at the end of this year. Through no fault of his own. Yeah. He's he's to me being the best performing driver. But Ferrari is Ferrari and prefers the clerk. Well, it's also why I put Sainz P4. Because even P5. though, again, like you said, Ferrari's going... No, sorry, you know, yeah, yeah. P4, yeah, yeah, you put Sainz P4, yeah. Um, because um, Sainz, for, they say, Ferrari say they're going to be equal, but it's obvious that they're going to try and favour Leclerc. But then again, it, it's Sainz, he's not Leclerc, he will not... He did it in the British Grand Prix uh, 2022, which he ended up winning. He's done it in Singapore, um, where he just goes against the team, decides to do his own thing, yeah. and it works out for him. And the way he's got something to prove so badly, I really don't see why he would be trying to then ruin his own sort of race, ruin his own sort of maybe um, 
to say marketability for other teams when for a team that's decided to completely just drop him. Yeah, yeah, that's what you mean. My my argument though though would be is he's not a number two driver. He's too good to be a number two driver, but he's like a a yeah. number one point five driver. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the man deserves his own team. He needs Audi. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, for for that reason, I I put Leclerc in P4 just because, like I said, Ferrari mm. will prioritise Leclerc. Yeah. You know, Science will have the better season. If there's wins to be had, it's Science that's going to take them in my mind. But yeah. You know, that's that's just the way I see it. So, well, I think it's pretty much decided what our top three are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's quite obvious, isn't it? So, let's let's just run through it. I've gone with Norris for third. Same. Yeah, so, out of uh, Ferrari, McLaren, Mercedes and Aston, it's going to be very close at the start of the season between all of them. Maybe Ferrari mm. a bit ahead. It's going to let them get a bit of a gap. Towards the tail end of the season, I see Merck and Aston dropping away from that field. I see McLaren getting stronger. But yeah. Perez, who I've put P2, <laughs> is, 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 is going to be really consistent at the start of the season. And he's going to have too big of a gap to come back from. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah I, I, like I said, I see, it, I see Norris outscoring the clerk by maybe five or six points. You know what I mean? Yeah, I Exactly. I just think, again, it'll be like last year at the end where it's so close between it's Sainz, Leclerc, Alonso and Norris. Yeah. And they went to the final race and it could have been any one of them which scored the best or which came the worst. So. Yeah. So, obviously, we both went Checo, P2. Yeah. I'll let you explain that one. Um, well, because it's Red Bull. Um, the, yeah, sure, they've got a great car. But Checo's not the golden boy, so the car's not tailored for him. And if he does do well, then they'll get an upgrade, so it goes against his driving style. And number one will be Logan Sarge. Sorry, um, Max Verstappen. <laughs> well, I wish I hadn't let you explain it now, because uh, I disagree. <laughs> 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 all I'm going to say, exactly right, right <laughs> all I'm going to say is if Checo was good enough, he would be the number one. He, and why did Ricardo leave in 2018? Because I specifically because Red Bull knew becoming, uh, Max Verstappen team. Yes, because Red Bull he, knew Max has a higher him. ceiling, and no. he's proved it. Come on, be honest. And Daniel Ricardo proved that he could be a four-time world champion only a couple of seasons early. So, ah, um, but not this I four-time world champion at the end of the season. <laughs> <laughs> So obviously, yeah, Max P1, uh, like like we already said, the guy doesn't have a day off. He's the best driver we've ever seen. <laughs> uh, yeah, the car is going to be, I think, possibly at the start of the season, even further ahead than it was last yeah, season. Great. And yeah, the fact that he, when he got asked about his car, he just said he does everything that I want to. That's just scary. That's it. Yeah, that's so. it. But I actually don't really see it. it. Like, I see Red Bull winning and Max winning easily. But I don't see it being yeah. as far ahead as he was last season. I hope not. Well, I think yeah. everyone hopes not, well, apart from Verstappen fans. No, I'm a Verstappen fan, but even I don't want it to be like last year. Because last year was just, why am I even watching the race? I know he's going to win. You know what I yeah. mean? A bit, a bit like Schumacher, a bit like Vettel, a bit like Hamilton. It's all an era thing, you know what I mean? So we all know Verstappen is going yeah. to win the championship. But it's by how much. And I, yeah. I don't see him winning 19 races this year is what I mean. Yeah. Like, e easily I can see 10. But any more than that, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, I think... There's going to be a couple of teams that get a win this year. I agree. 
So yeah, that pretty much wraps it up then, doesn't it, Mr. May? Indeed it does. And uh, yeah, sorry for the very, very similar predictions, but you know, <laughs> great minds think alike. Exactly. But uh, yeah, so feel free to put in the comments, if, if you're going to comment, uh, obviously your predictions, and if you have any questions to ask us. And May, uh, I believe we're going to try, at least for a couple of the races, to do like a uh, review sort of thing, aren't we? <coughs> yes. So it might not be every single race because obviously we both have work, we both got families, that sort of yeah. thing. But we we could probably manage like a, a, a I'd say probably half of them we could manage if it works in well. Yeah. So, yeah, hopefully you'll join us for that. But, uh, yeah, that's it from us. So, yeah. it's it's a good uh, take okay. care from me. And it's a good goodbye from me. I don't like bombshell. Good good I love that bombshell. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs> Thanks for watching.